A6 Diagnostic Technique Summary for Applied Human Biology Unit 1 exam. So just before we look at diagnostic techniques, I'm just going to do a bit of a recap on the immune system. Remember that innate immunity is present before exposure and is effective from birth and it responds to a broad range of pathogens. And some examples are physical barriers like the skin and chemical um, barriers like the hydrochloric acid in the stomach and biological barriers like the phagocytes performing phagocytosis. So innate or non-specific are physical, chemical and biological defences. You need to know the role of the physical barriers like the cilia, ciliated epithelial cells and also the skin. And um, when you cut the skin, obviously, you blood clots with platelets. Chemical defences and their location within the body. So hydrochloric acid in the stomach, uh, lysozyme enzyme in the tears which breaks down bacterial cell walls etc and include the inflammation response by histamine making the capillaries leaky to speed up the delivery of um, white blood cells specific details of the chemical involved in inflammation are not required biological defenses include mast cells phagocytes basophils and eosinophils and also natural killer cells and the roles of um, complementary and natural killer cell T cells are not required. Primary immunity. When first exposed to an antigen, the body usually takes several days to respond and build up a large supply of antibodies. And the number of antibodies will peak and then begin to decline. Adaptive primary immunity is recognition of self and non-self humoral and cell mediated response to include the roles of helper T cells, killer T cells and B cells. And the mechanism behind antigen presentation is not necessarily required. So I have some other videos um, on the immune system that I have also posted. Secondary immunity is the second time your body encounters an antigen. It already knows how to fight infection because of memory cells. Adaptive secondary immunity is the role of, and the role of T and memory B cells. Artificial adaptive immunity results from immunization with a vaccine. Artificial adaptive immunity includes vaccinations. Passive immunity, you need to know natural passive and artificial passive. So natural passive immunity is acquired by a child through placenta and breast milk. Diagnostic techniques. Monitoring and diagnosing abnormalities and illness in humans, for example, x-ray studies, mammography, CT scans. Reflex testing, when a test is performed to observe the body's response to a stimulus, for example, the knee-jerk reflex. The pupillary light reflex, this is the normal constriction of pupils when bright light shines on the retina and an abnormal result indicates optic nerve injury, head injury, bread, bread, bleh brain injury or stroke. So really normal pupillary light reflex should be when you shine a bright light, the pupil should constrict. In dim light, the pupil should dilate. Nerve conduction velocity test, NCV, measures how fast electrical impulses can travel through your nerves. Speeds between 50 to 60 meters per second is normal. This test is used to diagnose many nerve disorders, including carpal tunnel syndrome, herniated disc disease, um, and then measuring heart rate, taking heart rate with fingers at the neck to find the carotid pulse and the wrist to find the radial pulse, or you can do it automatically using a finger pulse oximeter. Measuring blood pressure, measured with a sphygmomanometer, no, sphygmomanometer, and a stethoscope. Um, the normal value should be about 120 to 80 millimetres per uh, mmHg. The first number in this is a systolic pressure when the ventricles are contracting and the second number is a diastolic pressure when the ventricles are relaxed. Low blood pressure is deemed as less than uh, 90, to 90 over 60 mmHg. High blood pressure is over 120 over 80 mmHg. Electrocardiogram or ECG is for recording 
the electrical changes that occur in the heart during a cardiac cycle. And a normal, normal ECG wave shows a PQRS complex, the T wave, PQRS T wave. So you've got the P here, Q here, R, S and T. And then bradycardia is a slow heart rate of less than 60 beats per minute. So you would see less PQRS T wave complexes per second or per minute. Um, tachycardia is a fast heart rate. It's a heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute. And you would see a lot more um, PQRS T waves per minute. Arrhythmia is an irregular heartbeat. I should say atrial. Atrial fibrillation is rapid, random, ineffective contractions of the atrium. So they're not evenly spread apart, the PQRST waves. Ventricular fibrillation is the rapid, irregular, and useless contractions of the ventricles. A flat, a flat line is asystole. That's basically no contraction or activity of the heart. Um, and this is where you would either use um, adrenaline or you would use a defibrillator um, because it means the heart stopped. And a myocardial infarction is a heart attack and you have an ST elevation. Capillary refill test, tissue perfusion. The pressure is applied to the nail bed um, until it turns white, indicating the blood has been forced from the tissue, which is called blanching. Then the pressure is removed and the healthcare provider measures the time it takes for the blood to return to the tissue. And return of blood is indicated by the nail turning back to a pink colour. And the normal time for a capillary refill test is two seconds. Tissue perfusion. Looking for colour changes within limbs or organs. Blood flow to an area can be observed using medical imaging techniques or uh, like MRI scans. If poor tissue perfusion is observed externally in the limb, then a Doppler could be used to detect a pulse, for example, in a limb of a patient with suspected blood clot or thrombosis. Thrombus. Um, measuring percentage saturation of oxygen in the blood, you're automatically using a finger pulse oximeter. Normal value should be above 92%. And it works by shining a light through the finger and measuring how much light is absorbed by the blood. Capillary blood gas assessment. Blood is taken from the earlobe and the saturation of oxygen measured. Measuring respiratory rate. Watch for a full breath. Inhalation and exhalation. Put a hand on the chest and watch the movement and count how many times this happens per minute. The average is about 12 breaths per minute, but... It can be anywhere from 12 to 20, the, average, uh, the normal range. Measuring body temperature, it should be about 37.2 for a healthy adult. Too high, it could mean the person has a fever. Too low, the person can have hypothermia. And it's measured with a thermometer under the tongue, under the armpit or forehead. And most thermometers are now digital, um, but traditional ones can still be used. Hematology summary. So a full blood count is all types of blood cell, including red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. C-reactive protein or CRP, um, the blood test is used to measure the level of inflammation in the body and it may indicate conditions that lead to cardiovascular disease. So C-reactive protein indicates inflammation. If there's a low red blood cell count, it could indicate anemia. A high white blood cell count is called leukocytosis because white blood cells are also known as leukocytes. So if there's lots of them, it's leukocytosis. Platelets, 150,000 to 350,000 per millimeter cubed is a normal amount. A high platelet count means there's an increased risk of a blood clot. A low platelet count means there's decreased clotting. An autoantibody test, any of several tests that look for specific antibodies to your own tissue and it can help diagnose autoimmune disorders. ABO blood groups, um, genetically determined classes of human blood that are based um, on their genotypes. Presence or absence of phenotypes, so A and B on the surface of red blood cells. The ABO blood group phenotypes are also called blood types, so A, B, AB and O. 
and then rhesus negative, no antigens or anti-RH antibodies receive and they can receive blood from negative and can donate to positive or negative. Rhesus positive, they have rhesus antigens, um, no antibodies can receive positive or negative blood and can donate to negative. AB blood group has both A and B antigens on the red blood cell surface, no antibodies in the plasma and they are the universal recipient. So A has these antigens, B has these antigens, AB has both and O has none. Um, and then in terms of the antibodies, obviously um, the antibodies present will be anti-B, for this one anti-A, these ones have no um, antibodies present, which is why they're the universal recipient. O, um, they don't have any antibodies present. Uh, antigens present and they have those antibodies present so O can be the universal donor so O blood group neither A or B antigen on the red blood cell surface they have both antibodies in their plasma so they can't really accept anything other than O but they can um, donate to everybody